Hello, this is Allie, Twitch superstar. Just to say, Commodore Ty has all your nerdy news in the world of pop culture. Come and boldly go where no man has gone before. Hello, this is Commodore Ty Coles here with another review on The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. This is episode 5, Truth. And we start off with a bang. Uh, Sam and Bucky track down John Walker and they demand the shield from him and he ain't taking no shit from them. John. You gotta give me the shield, man. There's a huge fight, and it comes down to Walker and Sam. Because Bucky is knocked out. This isn't you, John. Which is weird, because it should be Bucky and Walker fighting each other, and not Sam and Walker fighting each other. But... The story is about Sam becoming Captain America, so of course they gotta nullify Bucky in this fight somehow. So they have a huge tussle, and it ends up with John Walker getting his arm broken, but it also costs Sam his falcon suit. It gets completely destroyed. After this, it's more of a slow burn and we get a lot of character development. Bucky tracks down Zemo and in a bit of an anticlimactic situation, all he does was just hand Zemo over to the Dora Milaje. Ladies, I took the liberty of crossing off my name in your book. I hold no grudges for what you thought you had to do. James. But he does ask for a favor. Hey. I may have another favor to ask. Walker is put for a hearing and is dishonorably discharged. To be given an other than honorable discharge, retroactive to the beginning of the month. You will hold no rank in retirement and receive no benefits. Not only that, he is stripped of being coming Captain America and loses everything along with it. It's the order of this council that you are no longer to act in any capacity as a representative of the United States government or its military. You are hereby stripped of your title and authority as Captain America effective immediately. And that pisses him off royally. So, a down and out walker, he's sitting there. Like, holy crap, they cannot do this to me. So this agent comes up to him with a ridiculously long name. Well, these boots are not made for walking. Valentina Allegra de Fontaine. Actually, it's Contessa Valentina Allegra de Fontaine. And looking into her background... She's an espionage agent, and she's trying to recruit Walker. Did the right thing, taking the serum. Yeah, of course I know about that. And I'll tell you something, it has made you very, very valuable to certain people. So, it's interesting to see what's going to happen with that. Is she working for the power broker or for another agency? Wilson leaves his wingsuit with Torres to hopefully get fixed. Thanks, Torres. 
for sure. Wait, yo, you forgot the wings. Cable. And he goes visits Isaiah Bradley to talk more about his past. I bust out of the facility one night. And I brought them boys back. Not that it made a damn bit of difference. It wasn't long before it was only me left. But we learn more about his imprisonment and his fellow soldiers and how bitter he is. For the next 30 years, they experimented on me. So after uh, his talk with Isaacs, Sam goes home. And he helps his sister fix up the boat. Initially, he was hoping to sell it, but then he realizes, wait, now my sister wants to keep it after she wanted to get rid of it. In 10 years, we'll have this thing fixed. It would be fun to take the boat out one more time right before we sell it. It's a great spot in Grand Isle. Your grandfather used to take me catch a lot of fish. Mom said we can't sell it. Sam manages calling a few favors from the neighborhood and they get going and they fix the boat. Bucky comes by and he has this briefcase and he hands it to Sam. They get to talking, and you get some great character-building moments between these two. And you see uh, Sam finally train with the shield. And it's like they're giving each other advice and help and to grow and advance. But you got to make them feel better. you got to go to them and be of service. I'm sure there's at least one person in that book who needs closure about something, and you're the only person who can give it to them. And at the end of it, they've come to an agreement that, hey, the past is the past. Let's get, uh, let's go forward, get rid of this threat that the Flag Smashers are, and move on from there. You know Carly won't quit. Call me when you have a lead and I'll be there. Then we go to the Flag Smashers. And frankly, I don't give a rat's ass about the Flag Smashers. They don't seem like, they just seem like a normal terrorist threat. Like I've said since episode one, the only thing that's keeping them relevant is because they're full of super soldiers. But I digress. So they have a plan. They're going to attack the GRC. Because the GRC is planning a vote on this controversial bill that would forcibly move people from one country back to their own country, which is kind of what we do now. And the flag smashers don't see it like that. They feel like they should lie, where go wherever the fuck they feel like it. And now that everyone's back, oh look, they have to leave after they've been taking advantage of it. I'm sorry, I just... I see where they're trying to go with it, but I just can't agree with them. And guess what? They are jo uh, joined by George Batarak. Just get to him, man. Voila. Because the enemy of my enemy is my friend, pretty much. And so they plan their attack. And we see... That the meeting's going ahead. And even some of the world leaders are like, do we really, can we, should we really vote on this bill now? We gotta talk about it. Which, if the freaking Swag Smashers were... <laughs> if these Flag Smashers weren't doing these terrorist attacks, hey, they might actually get what they want. But because they decided to go towards terrorism, guess what, that's why... They're doing this now. And we are left with that. Sam is notified. He opens the briefcase and cut to black. (laughs) 
And we gotta wait until next week to see what was in the briefcase. Most likely a new suit. And it was made in Wakanda, so you know it's good. As well, we get this interesting cutscene that seems to be out of nowhere. We just see this one scene with Sharon Carter. For me, still be away in that Algerian prison. I can give you double this time. Many people will point to this scene and say, Aha, we knew it. She's the power broker. Maybe. Maybe all the fan theories are right. But remember the same fan theories that said uh, Mephisto was the big baddie in WandaVision. Doctor Strange is going to appear in WandaVision. I have a feeling that is was placed there to be a swerve on people. But who knows? I may be completely wrong, and the fan theories are right this time. But if you, I'm just curious, who do you think is the power broker? Leave a comment down below. We also get another cutaway scene with John Walker going to Lamar's parents and tell them the death of their son, and they actually agree with what he did. I knew the risk after everything you boys have been through together. I know. He's resting easier, knowing that the man who's responsible got his justice. And then we finally get a mid credit scene. A sh short one, but a powerful one. Where we see the now disgraced John Walker build his own shield. Taking his first steps to becoming the U.S. agent or Dark Captain America. So we're really heading towards this big climatic battle at the end for episode 6. It's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen. I cannot wait. It's going to be huge. It's going to be big. It's going to be spectacular. There's going to be fighting everywhere. Okay, enough of that. For your Commodore titles, live long and prosper. Hailing frequencies close. Thank you for watching the video. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, watch one of my other videos, and if you can show your support by donating to my PayPal. So, for Commodore Tide, live long and prosper all, and for now, until next time, the hail and frequencies are closed.